Hey everyone, today we're going to practice identifying information from graphic representations. These are the learning objectives. So basically you need to read and be able to recognize and locate relevant information in a graphic presentation. Examples are maps or pictographs or infographics. Um, and you can see again, um, kind of similar to the previous lesson, you need to be able to locate relevant information, right? From a whole paragraph or from a pictograph. So that's a very important skill that you need to have to be able to do very well with the T's uh, reading section. The second one is very similar, right? So you should be able to locate that information from a text or a graphic representation. Recognize visual graphics and figures within the text. Locate important information from graphic representation. Some examples of questions are, what does the number range represent? So for example, if there's a graph or there's text that has a number range, for example, 1000 to 2000 or 1997 to 2001, you need to know what those number ranges represent, right? Based on the information available from the graphic. Which of the following statements is accurate based on the map, right? So this kind of tests you to see if you can read a map correctly. So this is one of the practice questions in the official TEAS study menu. As you prepare for TEAS, if you happen to see a map somewhere, like in the hallway of school or, or in the textbook, perhaps spend a few minutes going through the map and see if you can identify all the elements on the map. And I'll try to find something like that in the future to kind of help you learn how to read a map. Which of the following is indicated by this illustration? So see if you can match the correct statement or the main topic or some kind of details with the illustration, right? Like a uh, infographic representation. Locate and understand important details. So here are specific questions from the TEAS study menu. This might not make too much um, sense to you now because you don't have the paragraph, but I just kind of want to show you what the questions may look like, right? If you need to locate specific details. Um, that paragraph, that question is about uh, obtaining a different nursing degree. So you can see what is the preferred nursing degree. You need to understand and choose the best one, right? From multiple nursing degrees, which patients would demand greater nursing care in residential care facilities. What is abbreviation, right? So you may have abbreviation like BSN, and then it will ask you, what does BSN mean, right? And usually this uh, information on abbreviation will be provided in, in the text or in the infographic. From which organization does a nurse receive a nursing license? So again, this information will be available. You just need to be able to locate it. All right, so here is a practice question. Uh, you can pause the video now and try to answer the question. All right, so you can see this is a infographic. So there's some text, so there's some numbers. And the most important part is if there's a title, you need to read the title. And this tells you what the infographic is about, right? So you can see this infographic is about the results or the outcome of Arizona's prevention and control measures implemented over the summer months, right? And the, the results are about whether these measures slow down the spread of COVID or not. And then you can read the three kind of columns, three boxes. First one is as 151% uh, increase, right? So you can see the arrow pointing up, that means increase. So that's 151% increase in cases after stay at home order was lifted. And then on the other side, you see a down arrow, that means the case is going down, right? So this is a 75% decrease in cases following sustained prevention efforts across the state. And what are those prevention efforts? Those are the things that, that Arizona implemented, right? Mask requirements, a limited public events, and closures of certain businesses. 
And there is even a kind of more explanation on what this infographic really represents, right? Number of cases stabilized and then decreased after multiple statewide and local prevention measures implemented. All right, so that's what the infographic is about. Now you have understood everything. It, it should be pretty easy to answer the questions. Number one, which state is the data in the infographic based on? That's Arizona. Okay. All right, second question. Again, pause the video now, answer it, and then come back. Okay, question two, which of the following measures is not implemented to slow down the spread of COVID in the infographic? Now, we just went over those three things mentioned in the infographic, right? So A, vaccination is not mentioned in this infographic. Now, I do want to make an important note. This infographic was released in the summer of 2020. So back then, the vaccines were not available. So the only effective measures that we could do to control COVID-19 were mask requirement um, and a limited public gathering and closures of businesses. So that's why vaccines uh, were not listed in this infographic. But again, ch information changes all the time, right? So if you look at the measures that we would do now, then uh, vaccination will be very effective measure to control COVID. Okay, question three, pause the video now, please. Okay, so question three asks, what the number 151% represents? Is it because cases went down? No, right? Because the arrow is pointing up. So C is not correct. Is it about the absolute number of cases? No, there's a percentage sign there, right? So that's not the absolute number of cases. So 151 COVID cases, that's not right. All right, now A and B are similar, so let's look at the second half. COVID cases went up 151% after the state at home order was lifted or after mask mandate was lifted. And you can see it's over here, right? After the state at home order was lifted. So correct answer is A. Okay, stop here and answer question four. Number four, what is the message conveyed by this infographic? Let's go through all the answer choices. A, prevention and control measures make little impact on COVID cases. That's not true, right? And then we just talk about this. The stay at home order uh, was very effective, right? Along with some of the other measures. B, everyone should do something to prevent the spread of COVID. Now, it, you can really kind of go back to the title, right? So this is uh, more about using a case study to tell the public that certain control measures and prevention measures are really effective, right? So it's really not about what individuals should do. So B is not correct. Now, even though B is a correct statement, right? Every single one of us should do something to help slow down the spread of COVID. C, number of COVID cases fluctuate depending on what individuals do. Um, I threw in this question to kind of try to trick you. Now, maybe some of you uh, see the numbers and you think, oh, those numbers just fluctuate, right? Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Um, that's actually not correct, right? Because this is not the kind of natural fluctuation. Like today, you have a thousand cases. Tomorrow, you have a thousand ten cases. That's not that kind of fluctuation. You can see this is a pretty significant difference, right? And it's not really about depending what individuals do. Like I said, this is more like a statewide stay home order and measures. Um, public gathering, mask wearing, and the closure of the businesses. So C is not correct. D, measures that minimize person-to-person -person contact and masking just drastically reduce the number of COVID cases. D is the correct answer. All right, that's the end of this lesson. Again, I hope the video is helpful. So thank you guys.